Hi everyone, this is Srikant Des, Assistant Professor of Tripoli Department. In this session, I'm going to give the basic introduction about amplifier circuits and its two port network model. Amplifier circuits, amplifier is nothing but which is going to amplify the input signal and increased output signal will be we are going to get at the output side that is nothing but the amplifier circuit here the amplifier circuits are the electronic devices are designed to increase the amplitude of the electrical systems or electrical signals so whenever we are going with amplification either we have to increase or decrease voltage or current parameters voltage and current parameters are the electrical parameters that's why amplifier circuits are electronic devices designed to increase the amplitude of electrical signals and they play a crucial role in various applications such as audio systems, communication systems, and instrumentation. And amplifiers can be classified based on different criteria. And one common classification is based on the number of ports. Here, two port devices. The two port devices are nothing but which is going to have one input terminals and one out one set of input terminals and one set of output terminals that is called a two port which is two port devices are the electronic components or systems which consists of two pairs of terminals typically designated as ports two pair of terminals either input terminals and output terminals and amplifiers are often categorized amplifiers are often categorized as two port devices because they have input and output ports here we are going to have the base as the input and collector or emitter as the output terminals. So transistor is going to have two ports. One is input port and another is output port. Along with this, there will be a common terminal. Either we, are, we can take emitter, base or collector as the common terminal and uh, we are going to have input terminal input terminal will be will be having the base terminal and the output terminal will be collector or emitter terminals and the input port is the where signal is to be applied where the signal to be amplified is applied that is whatever the signal which we need to amplify that signal will be applied across the input terminals and the output port is the where the amplified signal is obtained output port is nothing but it is the port where we are going to get the amplified output at the terminal and these two port parameters help to characterize the behavior of the amplifier these two port parameters are going to give us the characteristics of the amplifier and their behavior. That is, how will be the input impedance, output impedance, how will be the voltage gain, current gain corresponding to the given circuit will be we can calculate and those will help us to understand the amplifiers characteristics and the most common two port parameters are 
voltage gain current gain input impedance and output impedance and these parameters are essential for analyzing and designing amplifier circuits here these amplifier networks refer to the interconnection of various amplifier stages to achieve a desired overall system performance so these amplifier networks are going to have different uh, interconnections between the amplifiers in order to get the desired output whatever we require and networks can be designed to provide specific gains bandwidths and impedance matching these networks are going to be designed such that which is going to produce a specific values corresponding to the gain bandwidth and impedance matching and different amplifier configurations such as common emitter common collector and common base for bipolar junction transistor or common source common drain and common gate for the field effect transistors are used in amplifier networks so for bjt we are going to have three types of biasings that is by taking the common what are the terminals we are going to have that is common collector common base and common emitter if we consider for a field effect transistor it will be having common source common drain and common gate which are used in our amplifier circuits now these are the different types of amplifier networks the first one is the cascade amplifier here cascade amplifier which is a multiplier multiple amplifier stages are connected in series cascade amplifier is nothing but the two mul if let us consider n number of multipliers are connected together these are connected in series then the type of amplifiers are called cascade amplifier multiple amplifier stages are connected in series and each stage continue contributes to the overall gain each stage is, is going to be contributed to the overall gain and the next one is cascode amplifier here it is a it combines a common emitter stage with a common base stage common emitter stage or with a common base stage and which provides a high gain high input impedance and low in low output impedance here in the cascode amplifier which is going to combine a common emitter stage with a common base stage and which provides high gain high input impedance and low output impedance and the next one is the feedback amplifier here the feedback amplifier is nothing but it utilizes the feedback to control gain and improve stability and reduce distortion this feedback amplifier is the amplifier which utilizes the feedback to control the gain and and improve the stability and which reduces the distortion and common types include voltage feedback and current feedback amplifiers here this feedback amplifiers are of two different types one is 
what we are taking as a feedback based on the what parameter we are taking as a feedback based on that the amplifiers are classified and those amplifiers are of voltage amplifier and current feedback amplifier voltage feedback amplifier and current feedback amplifier and the next one is differential amplifier it consists of two input terminals and amplifies a voltage difference between them this differential amplifier is nothing but which is going to have two input terminals but the output will be the voltage difference between the two input terminals if let us take v1 is the input voltage at the first two port network and v2 is the second voltage the difference in voltage which we are going to call it as differential amplifier so v2 minus v1 is the differential voltage and these are commonly used in operational amplifiers and differential amplifiers generally these are going to be used in op amps and differential amplifiers and the next one is power amplifier and this power amplifier is designed to deliver high power to the load this power amplifier is designed to deliver a high power to the load common classes include class a b class a b are the amplifier circuits which are going to have the main importance in this amplifier introduction and how these amplifiers are going to be operated and the applications we will see next here we need to understand the characteristics and parameters of two port devices two port devices and designing amplifier networks are crucial for creating efficient and reliable amplification systems in electronic circuits and the choice of amplifier configuration depends on the choice of amplifier configuration depends on the specific requirements what are the specific requirements we require based on that we are going to choose the different amplifier configuration such as gain either voltage gain or current gain whether it should be high or moderately or minimum based on that we are going to take the gain and then the bandwidth bandwidth also it should allow the all frequencies and input impedance and power handling capabilities the two port devices and networks are fundamental components in the field of electrical engineering and electronics here these two port uh, devices or networks are the basic concepts corresponding to the electrical circuits and understanding the characteristics of two port devices and their interconnections in networks is essential for analyzing and designing the electronic systems the next one is a two port device is a circuit or system with two pairs of terminals typically labeled as input and output and these devices are characterized by their input output relationships and are often represented by 
two sets of voltage and current variables. These two port networks are going to have two ports and when we are taking two ports, we should give some voltage convention to the each port that is V1, V2 and in the same way automatically the currents will be generated once the voltage is given current will be generated. So I1, I2 like this we have to give the voltage and current parameters corresponding to the device and which these values are going to represent the input and output variables and the common two port devices which include amplifier transformers and transmission line. The two port parameters, the first one is the voltage gain. The voltage gain is nothing but it is the ratio of output voltage to the input voltage. It is the ratio of output voltage to the input voltage that is denoted with AV where AV is equals to output voltage by input voltage and the next one is the current gain the ratio of current output current to the input current so gain is nothing but output parameter by input parameter so the current gain is nothing but ratio of output current to the input current that is ai is equals to i naught by I, I. And next input impedance, the impedance seen at the input terminals when the output is open circuited, when the output is open circuited. Here the impedance seen in the, seen at the input terminals when the output side is short circuited. Input impedance is nothing but what is the impedance offered by the circuit when the output terminals are open circuited and output impedance is nothing but it is the impedance seen at the output terminals when the input is short circuited. Now, a two port network is formed by the interconnection of two or more two port devices or networks are used to achieve specific signal processing functions such as amplification, filtering and impedance matching. The analysis of two port networks involves the determination of overall network parameters based on the parameters of individual two port devices. Now let us take the what are the different types of two port networks. The first two port network is the cascade network. Cascade network is nothing but series connection. So two or more two port devices are connected in series then we are going to call that network as a cascaded network. Two or more two port devices are connected in series. The overall transfer function is the product of the individual transfer functions. Here when we go with the cascade network, the overall transfer function is the product of individual transfer functions. And the sec second one is parallel network. Here two or more, two or more two port devices are connected in parallel. The overall transfer function 
is the sum of the individual transfer functions here in the parallel network the overall transfer function is the sum of individual transfer function and the next one is hybrid network which is going to have both series and parallel connections of two port devices which is often used in different communication systems and lattice network this lattice network arrangement that may include the feedback loops used for specialized application in radio frequency systems these lattice networks are going to be have a special application in the radio frequency applications and these are some of the applications of two port devices and networks the first one is the amplifiers amplifier is a circuit which increase the strength and electrical signal And the next one is the filters that is networks can be designed to selectively pass on pass or attenuate several frequency components the next one is the matching networks which is used to match impedance between here the matching networks are used to match the impedance between different components for efficient power transfer the communication systems two port networks are cu crucial in the design of radio frequency and microwave systems here some more applications understanding the behavior of two port devices and how they can be interconnected in networks is vital role for engineers working on the design and analysis of electronic circuits and systems the use of mathematical model and parameters simplifies the analysis and optimization of complex networks and in practical applications now let us go with the two port networks how till now we are discussing that there are two ports in the circuit how the two ports are there and how we are going to represent the voltage and current we are going to see in this session so here we are going to have two input ports or we can also call it as one as input one as output for these two we have to give some input voltage in order to conduct the transistor here we are having the two port network whatever the network we are going to have which is going to have the two ports one will be input port and another will be output port or we can also call it as two input ports and these two port terminals are represented with one and one dash two and two dash and here is the v1 of s or v1 is the input voltage and v2 is the output voltage i1 is the input current i2 is the output current and here these variables are going to have different relationships between these variables depending on which two of the four variables are given while the other two can always be derived so first let us go with the two port network 
what are the different models we are going to have in the two port networks. There are different parameters which are needed to analyze a two port network. If the network is linear, each variable can be expressed as linear function of some two other variables, then we have the following models. The first one is Z impedance model, Y admittance model, ABCD transmission model, H model, hybrid model. Generally, in the transistor analysis, we are going to use the hybrid model. So here, if we are considering for a Z parameter, how will be the relations we are going to have and how we are going to calculate the Z parameters, let us see. So Z parameters are also known as the impedance parameters. When we use Z parameters for analyzing two port network, the voltage can be represented as function of currents. That is V1 is the function of F1 of I1 and I2. And a V2 is equals to F2 of I1 and I2. So here this relation can be written as, this relation can be written as V1 is equals to Z11 into I1 plus Z12 into I2, where V2 is equals to Z21 into I1 plus Z22 into I2. Here V1, V2 is equals to Z11, Z12, Z21. Z22 into I1 I2, which is equals to Z into I1 I2. And here, in order to get, in order to get the input parameters, in order to get the input parameters, that is, in order to get Z11 and Z12, we have to go for open circuiting the other terminals. That is, when we are making in this, in these equations, when we make I2 is equals to 0, I2 is equals to 0. From this, we are going to get V1 by I1 is equals to Z11 where Z11 is equals to input impedance by keeping output open V1 by I1 where which is equals to I2 is equals to 0. And then after that we are going to get Z21 where Z21 is equals to V2 by I1 by making I2 is equals to 0. So that means we are making the secondary side as open circuit in order to calculate the primary side values, input impedance and transfer impedance during the output open terminals. And next we are going to calculate the a reverse that is output parameters by making I1 as short circuit, I1 as open circuit. Here we are going to make I1 value is equal to 0 and where Z12 is the reverse transfer impedance keeping input open that is V1 by I2 where I1 is equal to 0. And in the same way, the output impedance we are going to get, the output impedance is the Z22, which is going to get when the input is open circuited, that is I1 is equals to 0, then V2 by 
i2 and here the next parameter is y parameters y parameters are also known as the admittance parameters when we use the admittance parameter or y parameter for analyzing two port network the currents are represented as function of voltage currents are represented as function of voltage where y parameter is dual of z parameters so here i1 is equals to function 1 of v1 comma v2 and i2 is equals to f2 of v1 comma v2 where i1 is equals to y11 into v1 plus y12 into v2 and i2 is equals to y21 into v1 plus y22 into v2 here i1 i2 is equals to y11 y12 y21 and y22 into v1 v2 which is equals to y into v1 v2 so here we are going to make this either v20 or v10 v20 means secondary side is short circuited v10 means primary side is short circuited so in order to get the input admittance that is y11 y11 we are going to make v2 as 0 that we are going to get i1 by v1 and in the same way when v2 is equals to 0 we are going to get forward transfer up admittance keeping output short circuit that is i2 by v1 i2 by v1 and next after this we have to make the input parameter as short circuit and we need to calculate the other two parameters that is when we make v1 is equals to 0 that is reverse transfer admittance that is i1 by v2 we are going to get and the output admittance keeping input short circuit that is i2 by v2 now we'll go with the a b c d parameters these are also called as transmission parameters here voltage and current and of input part are expressed in terms of output part input parts will be expressed in terms of output parts that is v1 is the function of v2 and i2 and i1 is the function of v2 and i2 where v1 is equals to a into v2 minus b into i2 i1 is equals to c v2 minus d i2 here v1 i1 which is equals to a b c d into b2 and minus i2 here in order to get the values for a b c d either we have to make i20 that is nothing but secondary short circuit or sorry secondary open circuit or secondary short circuit here a is nothing but reverse voltage gain keeping output open circuited that is v1 by v2 where i2 is equals to 0 and b is the reverse transfer impedance keeping output short circuited that is v1 by i2 where here v2 is 0 means the secondary side is short circuited here i2 0 means it is open circuited and reverse transfer admittance keeping output open circuited that is i1 by v2 here the secondary current is open circuited i2 is equals to 0 and the next one is reverse current gain keeping output short circuited which is equals to i1 by i2 where v2 is equals to 0 v2 0 means it is 
short circuit now the next one is the h parameters h parameters are also known as hybrid parameters in hybrid parameter circuit voltage gain current gain impedance and admittance are used to determine the relation between the current and voltage of the two port network v1 is equals to function of i1 comma v2 and i2 is equals to function of i1 comma v2 here v1 is equals to h11 into i1 plus h12 into v2 where i2 is equals to h21 i1 plus h22 v2 and here in order to get these values h11 h12 h21 and h22 we have to make v20 v20 means we have to make the secondary side short circuit and i10 that is the primary side open circuited so h11 is the input impedance keeping output short circuited which is equals to v1 by i1 where v2 is equals to 0 and h12 is the reverse voltage gain keeping input open h12 is the reverse voltage gain that is v1 by v2 by making i1 is equals to 0 and h22 is the output admittance keeping input open which is equals to i2 by v2 where i1 is equals to 0 and h21 is the forward current gain keeping output short circuited where i2 by i1 where v2 value is equals to 0 and here this is the main a uh, two port network parameter model where we are going to use it in the transistor model transistor small signal model here because we are going to have the voltage gain and current gain and input impedance and output admittance so all the parameters we are going to get with this h parameter model that's why the electronic uh, devices such as transistors are going to be uh, represent the h parameter model for the given amplifier circuit let us see the all the equations corresponding to this two port network relations these are the different equations corresponding to all the four two port network relations that is z for z parameters v1 is equals to z11 into i1 plus z12 into i2 and v2 is equals to z21 into i1 plus z22 into i2 and in the same way y parameters i1 is equals to y11 into v1 plus y12 into v2 and i2 is equals to y21 into v1 plus y22 v2 these are the z and y parameters and a b c d parameters are v1 is equals to a v2 minus b i2 and i1 is equals to c v2 minus d i2 and in the same way h parameters v1 is equals to h11 into i1 plus h12 into v2 and i2 is equals to h21 into i1 plus h22 into v2 here in order to get z11 and z22 we are going to make sorry in order to get z11 and z21 we are going to make i2 as 0 and in order to get z12 and z22 we are going to make i1 as 0 and in the same way 
here also we are making v20 in order to get y2 y11 and y21 and we are going to make v1 is equals to 0 in order to make y12 and y22 like this abcd parameters also we are going to make v20 and i20 in order to calculate the abcd values and in the same way h parameters also we are going to make i10 and v20 in order to get all the h parameters yeah in this session we have discussed what is the amplifier circuit and how this amplifier circuit is going to be represented in two port network model and uh, what are the different configurations of two port networks and the main two port network which we are going to use for transistor are discussed thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates